Uh, our next speaker will be Brittany Taylor. Brittany is an associate at Davis LLP's Toronto office and is a member of the Employment and Labor Law Group. Brittany has experience advising employers on their current and upcoming obligations under the AODA. That's the Accessibility for Ontarians with Disabilities Act from 2005. She has assisted employers to draft and implement accessible customer service policies. I'm sure she'll explain what that is. Practices and procedures, as well as multi-year accessibility plans and accessibility policies. Brittany has also helped employers to respond to audit letters from the Accessibility Directorate of Ontario, who is also a co-sponsor of today's event, and to comply with their reporting obligations under the AODA. Brittany's experience also includes working with senior counsel to re represent employers in a broad range of employment and labor law matters. So please welcome Brittany Taylor. Good morning, everybody. Can everyone hear me okay? Okay, great. Okay, so let's start with the basics. So what is the AODA? So the AODA was passed in 2005, and the goal of the legislation is to create a barrier-free Ontario for persons with disabilities by 2025. So the AODA um, is a very broad-reaching piece of legislation. It applies to both public and private organizations and to large and small organizations. The AODA itself as a piece of legislation establishes several very important things. So it defines many of the concepts that you're going to see used throughout the AODA and its regulations, including what is a disability, what is a barrier, and what is an accessibility standard. The other thing it does is it gives the government the right to establish enforceable accessibility standards by regulation under the Act and sets out how these standards are going to be developed. The government has created five accessibility standards that set out uh, what you have to do in order to comply with the AODA. And uh, as I said, this is done by creating regulations under the Act. So the first standard to be created is the customer service standard. Um, and I'm sure everybody likes to think it's so special that it gets its own regulation. Um, but it's really just because it was the first regulation to be passed under the AODA. So the customer service standard is already in effect. It applies to every public sector organization and every other person or organization that provides goods or services to members of the public or other third parties and that has at least one employee in Ontario. This is an incredibly broad definition and I think the message is clear that the government is saying the AODA should apply to almost everyone who does business in Ontario, which makes sense. You can't have a barrier-free Ontario by 2025 if only half of the organizations in Ontario are required to comply with the AODA. The customer service standard governs the accessible provision of goods and services to persons with disabilities and includes things like the requirement to establish policies, practices, and procedures um, governing the provision of goods and services to persons with disabilities, um, supporting the use of service animals and support persons, having an accessible feedback process, and training employees, agents, volunteers, and other people who interact with the public. Different requirements will apply under the standard depending on whether your organization has 20 or more employees. Um, the compliance deadlines depend on what type of organizations you are. So if you're a public sector organization, your compliance deadline was January 1st, 2010, and for everyone else, January 1st, 2012. The remaining four accessibility standards are lumped into an omnibus regulation called the Integrated Accessibility Standards Regulation, which I'm going to refer to from now on as the IASR. So let's unpack the IASR a little bit. It's an intimidating beast of a regulation, uh, but it's stuffed full of important things that you need to know. So as I mentioned earlier, there are five accessibility standards under the AODA. We've talked about the customer service standard already. The IASR is going to cover the remaining four standards, which are information and communications, employment, transportation, and the design of public spaces. Each standard has its own unique requirements, and each of these requirements has its own unique deadline. 
So as a result, some of the, requir the requirements under the information and communication standard and the employment standard, for example, are already in effect, while other requirements under those exact same standards won't come into effect until 2021. So if, if that isn't enough, the IASR also creates a series of general requirements. Um, they don't belong to any one particular standard, but they're just as important. So I'm sure some of you are hoping after that, descri that description that somehow the ISR will magically not apply to you. Um, but unfortunately, or rather fortunately, I think, the ISR applies to pretty much everyone. Um, so it applies to anyone who provides goods, services, or facilities to the public, or even just to other third parties, and that has at least one employee in Ontario. So let's move on to talk specifically about digital accessibility requirements. People are getting really freaked out about the digital accessibility requirements now, largely because as of January 1st, 2014, the requirement to have an accessible website or web content requirements under the information and communication standard became a real thing that people had to start worrying about. Um, but the truth is that digital accessibility is all over the AODA. Persons with disabilities must be given an opportunity equal to that given to others to obtain, use, and benefit from the goods or services. So as David said, um, websites are becoming more and more important in terms of the provision of goods and services today. Uh, in a lot of cases, people have the ability to search for and buy products online, and that's only going to become more common as we go forward. In order for a person with a disability to have an equal opportunity to obtain, use, and benefit from your products, you may have already started to think about making your website more accessibility or more accessible long before this website requirement under the information and communication standard actually came out. Um, certainly, I think this third requirement is designed to get organizations thinking about what changes they can make throughout the organization to comply with the overall message of equal opportunity, um, and that includes digital accessibility. Let's talk specifically for a moment about the accessible websites and web content requirement under the ISR. You can find these in section 14 of the ISR in case you want some light reading later. Uh, the requirement states that public sector organizations, both large and small, and large private organizations shall make their websites and web content conform to the World Wide Web Consortium Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, or WCAG, 2.0. Level AAA is the highest level of accessibility. The AODA only ever requires compliance up to the second level, level AA. Let's talk about deadlines. The deadlines have caused some confusion and, let's be honest, panic among a lot of people, um, and that's because there's two of them. January 1st, 2014, which is already passed, and January 1st, 2021. If you have a new internet website as of January 1st, 2014, then you must conform with WCAG 2.0 level A by the end of this year. Now I say by the end of this year because even though technically you should already be in compliance, you don't actually have to report on this to the government until December 31st, 2014. So there is that little bit of wiggle room if you're still getting this, uh, getting this process set up if you have to. If you have managed to avoid the first deadline of January 1st, 2014, don't worry, your time will come. All internet websites and web content published after January 1st, 2012 will be required to comply with WCAG level AA by January 1st, 2021, just with the two exceptions noted on the slide. So what is a new website? The Accessibility Directorate has thankfully provided us with some helpful clarification in this regard. A new website is a website with a new domain name, uh, such as aodarules.com, becoming aodaisawesome.com. It also includes a website that is undergoing a significant refresh. So what does this mean? This means changing more than 50% of the content, design, or technology of the site. So if you're rewriting or reorganizing graphics, text, changing the layout of your website, changing how you navigate through the website, changing the style, the publishing platform, and so on, you're gonna wanna think about whether you have changed your website enough to fall into the significant refresh category. If you are convicted of an offense under the AODA, the fines are substantial. 
Individuals can be fined up to $50,000 per day as long as the offense continues to occur. Corporations, that amount is $100,000 per day. And something that you need to know as a director or officer of a corporation is that you can be individually liable for the $50,000 daily fine where you fail to take all reasonable care to prevent the corporation from committing an offense under the AODA.